You know that feeling when something just doesn't sit right? A robot that smiles but doesn't blink. An AI-generated face that looks perfectly human until it moves. A mannequin that you could have sworn turned its head. It's not quite fear, not quite disgust, but something in between. That eerie discomfort is what we call the Uncanny Valley. In this video, we're going to explore where this term came from, why it affects us so deeply, and how it shows up in the media and technology around us. From humanoid robots to CGI characters and everything in between, the uncanny valley taps into something ancient, something hardwired into the way we perceive reality. Welcome to Concept Explained, The Uncanny Valley. The Uncanny Valley is a concept in robotics and aesthetics that describes the unsettling feeling we get when something looks almost, but not quite, human. The term was first coined in the 1970s by Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori. He proposed a graph of emotional response. As a robot becomes more human-like, our affinity for it increases up to a point. But then, right before perfect realism, our comfort drops sharply. This dip in the graph, that's the uncanny valley. We feel empathy for a cartoon face or a robot arm because they're clearly not human. When something gets too close, skin texture, eye movement, subtle facial expressions, we start noticing everything that's wrong it's like looking at a wax figure that stares back. There's a strange psychological tension at play. Our brains recognize the human form, but something doesn't match. It's that mismatch between appearance and behavior that triggers discomfort. There are a few key traits that define the uncanny valley experience. First, realism without precision. The face looks human, but it doesn't emote correctly. The voice sounds natural, but the cadence is robotic. The eyes are glossy and lifelike, but somehow hollow. Second, subtle errors. These aren't grotesque monsters or obvious fakes. They're nearly convincing. That's what makes them so eerie. Our brains are trained to pick up on the smallest social cues, micro expressions, blink rates, natural breathing. When those things are missing or misaligned, our detection systems fire off alarms. Finally, it's not just visual. The uncanny can be auditory, too. Think of text-to-speech voices that come close to sounding real, but pause in all the wrong places. Or motion, like when a humanoid robot walks, but moves a little too smoothly, or not smoothly enough. It's not that we don't want realism, we just want it to feel right, and when it doesn't, our instincts reject it. The uncanny valley shows up in a surprising number of places, sometimes intentionally, sometimes by accident. In animation, 
CGI characters have often struggled to avoid the valley. Early attempts at digital humans, like those in the Polar Express, were criticized for their lifeless expressions and dead eyes. The characters were almost human, but not enough. In video games, it's a similar story. Titles like L.A. Noir pushed facial realism to new heights, but many players found the results unnerving rather than immersive. The hyper-detailed faces didn't quite sync with the more rigid body movements. Then there are robots, especially androids designed to mimic human behavior. Projects like Hiroshi Ishiguro's Geminoid series, which replicate real people down to their blinking and breathing, live directly in the uncanny valley. They're marvels of engineering, but many observers report feeling deeply unsettled after interacting with them. And finally, we see it in AI-generated content. As deepfakes and virtual influencers grow more common, so does our awareness of their flaws. A face might look flawless in a still image, but once it speaks or blinks, something feels off. That subtle unease is becoming a new hallmark of modern digital media. So why does the Uncanny Valley exist in the first place? One theory suggests it's evolutionary. Humans are naturally wired to detect illness, death, or threats in other humans. A face that moves unnaturally, or a voice that sounds wrong, might signal danger. Our revulsion, then, is a kind of built-in defense mechanism. One that evolved long before we had to worry about androids or CGI. Another theory relates to empathy. We expect to feel connected to something that looks like us. But when that connection fails, when the emotional response isn't returned, it creates a sense of betrayal or hollowness. It's like reaching out for a handshake and being met with a mannequin. There's also a philosophical side. The uncanny valley forces us to confront what it means to be human. Where is the line between artificial and authentic? How do we define real emotion, real intelligence, or real presence. As technology continues to blur those lines, our relationship with the uncanny will only grow more complicated. The uncanny valley isn't just a curiosity, it's a creative and ethical challenge. For designers and engineers, it's something to be carefully navigated. Too much realism without perfect execution risks rejection. That's why many creators choose stylization over photorealism. Think of Pixar characters who avoid the valley by staying clearly fictional. In horror though, the uncanny valley is often embraced. Films like Ex Machina or Megan, use the discomfort of near-human behavior to amplify fear. The closer something comes to human without being human, the more room there is for tension, dread, and existential horror. And in everyday life, as AI becomes more embedded in communication, entertainment, and even companionship, we're going to encounter more of these near humans. The question isn't just how we feel about them, 
but how they reflect us back to ourselves. The uncanny valley is more than just a dip on a chart. It's a mirror reflecting our hopes, our fears, and the delicate line between what's real and what only pretends to be. It challenges us to think about identity, emotion, and connection in an age where imitation is almost indistinguishable from authenticity. Whether it's a poorly animated face, a hyper-real robot, or an AI that almost gets it right, the uncanny valley reminds us that being human isn't just about looking the part. So next time you feel that creeping sense of unease, when something seems almost human, but not quite, you'll know exactly what you're looking at. Remember, stay curious, and as always, thank you for watching.